previously on Uongozi. Toll free line to my office as your secretary. Toll free line. And Kenyans must learn something here called family planning. Tunamchagua mtu kuwa kiongozi, lakini baada ya miezi sita amenunua chopa. Everybody did their best. Uh, I see we still have this narrative of people doing their best. Mm -hmm. James, you as party leader were responsible for the performance of your party. On that basis, you are the person going home today. There will be a second person going home, and that person is, is Zena. There are only six contestants left from the 16 who made it to the final round, but only one of them will emerge the winner of Uongozi. Who will it be? The winner of Uongozi will get a six-month leadership prize which will include an all-expenses-paid trip to experience six leadership and governance institutes across four continents Asia, Africa, Europe and North America. A total of 1.2 million shillings stipend over the six-month period and a 3 million shillings grant to implement a public project of their choice. The Uongozi show is presided over by three judges Mumbi Kaigwa, Tom Boya and Mweni Lundi. From time to time there will be a guest judge depending on the task. Welcome back contestants, as you can see only a few of you remain in the competition. I'd like to invite uh, my fellow judges to introduce the reshuffled Not team. so fast Judge Tom, there's a surprise today, but not from you, from Felipe. I've got something to say this morning Okay. and I want to share it with you judges and the contestants. I want to officially confirm and say that I'm resigning from Mwongozi reality TV show. I've decided that my choice will be to go back in Machakos County and save my political career. Thank Felipe has decided to leave Uongozi to sir. go and compete for the Machakos County Ward representative position. It would be unfortunate if you made a decision which uh, ultimately uh, you, are, you are unsure about. It appears that uh, you are clear about why you have taken the decision that you have uh, and that is something that, uh, that we shall respect. Okay, with that, uh, we would like to ask you now to leave the situation room. Thank you very much. Leadership is a series of big dilemmas and uh, making of tough choices. For the first time in my life, and I want to repeat this, for the first time in my life, I've been forced to choose in between two great things. Number one, me being in Wongozi project is one good thing. I never believed that maybe I'll reach this far. But I've come this far. I'm in the top, I was in the top six. I'll give Wongozi project or program a thumbs up. It's an honest process, and I'm very glad that I'm a part of it. Most of the time we talk about leadership and politics, but for me I believe that is a thin line in between politics and leadership. Sometimes we even say they're all the same. But I want to stand for what agenda that Wongozi is pushing for, but in a different platform. I'll be your ambassador where I'll be. Leo. Those of you that remain. With Felipe's exit from the competition, it was time for the five remaining contestants to get to their next task, but not without another reshuffle. And now for today's task. You will be expected to export the Maasai market concept as a way of selling Kenyan handicrafts to various international markets. Today, you'll be meeting artisans, sellers, and traders of Kenyan handicrafts in order to understand their markets and needs. Tomorrow, you will be asked to prepare a proposal on the exportation of the concept, which you will present to high-level representatives of various countries. 
in this task will be that whose proposal is selected by the representatives. That being said, Twendeni Kazi Viongozi. The two teams head to their common rooms to deliberate on the day's task. Eunice is not one to shy from stepping up to the plate and yet again she nominates herself as team leader. I wanted to nominate myself as the leader of this ta task for two reasons. One, having lived abroad for 10 years, uh, I've sold um, Maasai crafts for fundraising for you know African student association, things like that um, at the university level. And then the second one is, to be honest, I have, it's a business idea that I've had for quite a while and I've also I've taken it to the point of business plan. So I have done some research, not a lot, but I've done some research on how to um, market it on a bigger level to the international community. Eunice talked about having uh, an ex experience about uh, the same task. I don't know whether it, it's, it's in our interest, but uh, as of now, I think it will work for us. First things first. Yeah. Amongst the two of us, we need a team leader. <laughs> Let me chair. If you're comfortable. Okay. Over at Wazalendo, Joram jumps at the opportunity to be team leader for a third time, and Hardlin is only too happy to let him. I think we should first make sure that we all understand what what is being asked of us. First, we're supposed to understand, first of all, before taking this idea to the people we are going to meet. Yeah. We are first supposed to understand this market yeah. and sell the idea to these people. So one of the things that probably we need to prepare with uh, ourselves with is um, uh, which um, probably type of, type of questions that we'll ask. We could have lots and lots of questions we want to ask, but mm. we can't. Mm. So my suggestion is we approach it from the SWOT point of view. Mm. Now once we have that, and then we can come up with uh, bullet points on the, the, the real issues. Yeah. Ours is to understand what uh, they are going through mm -hmm. and from the challenges or the success what they, they, they'll tell us. Come up with a proposal to is in the, the European the, the, market. To European market. I'm not sure that they understand that it's the concept of Maasai market that is being exported and not just the goods, it's actually the whole concept of having this Kenyan version of a flea market or the Kenyan version of a market. In the process of conducting our work, then we'll be able to even um, uh, get from him the source of, um, I mean, raw materials where he gets his, his raw materials. We have a float of 10,000 shillings. So should we maybe come up with a certain maybe dress mode for this particular presentation? I feel African would be better than uh, executive. Strategies locked down. It's time to head out to meet the artisans and traders at Karyoko Market. We are in Karyoko Market, an open-air market that offers a wide variety of goods from food items to clothing. It is from this market that the goods sold in Maasai Market are made. The contestants are here to meet the traders and artisans in preparation for their presentation. Each team has been given a float of 10,000 Kenya shillings. It is my pleasure to introduce Mr. Moses Mutier, who is the chairman of Karyoko Open Market. I hope uh, you will find what you are looking for in this market. We will point you out to the other traders who can ask questions as you introduce yourself. So, welcome. The chairman of Karyoko Market yeah. takes the contestants on a tour of the market. Wazalendo go first. Karyoko is known basically for years to be the main producer of uh, Saiso baskets. Wazalendo get acquainted with some of the artifacts in a manner they had not anticipated. Sorry, 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 sorry. Sorry, sorry for that. Some of these are beads which are called the trade beads, mm. which were used like money during the, the, the battle trade when there was no money. Mm. Yeah, so some of these are, are valuable in this store. Oh, now what we are going to do, yes. um, I want to, we want to de uh, deliver it a bit, yes. and then uh, we will tell you specific uh, stalls yes. that we would want you to take us to. So we tell him to take us to Ken's stall. Eh? Mm. Ken. Ken is a color. Mm. 
bead work which one can we take from? There were some beads we just passed by. This is uh, one of the tasks that uh, I would say is enjoyable to the extent that you get to see uh, new things, uh, mean new things and uh, interact with people. But our interaction was uh, limited because like time was short so you could not like interact with everybody. But again you see what people are doing and it gives you a true face of working Kenyans. They didn't seem to have a lot of questions and therefore they did not get a lot of information. And I'm wondering whether they would be able to develop that proposal or that presentation with the information that they got. Fitting inside. Yeah. But you can see they can all fit inside. Yeah. Having given Rosa Lendo an orientation tour of the market, Buana Mutie now takes Kenya Moja on the same tour. Having had a chance to interact with the traders, it's now time for both teams to purchase goods that they feel will be most representative of Maasai market during their presentation. So we started off with the strategy of going all three of us, but we realized that's just time wasting. So I stayed picking up the jewelry and uh, painting and stuff like that, and the boys came because the color for us was. For me, especially, like I'm saying, it's really a big thing. We can really market it because it's something very distinct. Like he said, it's the history that comes distinctly from here. Something very unique that you won't find anywhere in the world. No, so, okay. Discount. Okay, make it. What are the panya three hundred? I think that they did a pretty good job. Um, they've learned from their past experience to be a little bit more keen on their research element. They asked some good questions and I think they were buying some samples so that I guess it will help them create the model that they want to create. But as judges, we're still expecting more. The next day, the teams are back in their common rooms where they are expected to design a proposal on exporting Maasai market and, by extension, Kenyan culture. They will be presenting their proposals to top diplomats. Eunice seems to have already decided how her team will proceed. I came up with a, a way to structure our proposal, if you have any other points to add, just to make it easier and so we know who has to focus on what. We will discuss all the points so that we all, but when it comes to typing, you will work on that um, specific point. I think we can pick a story of action where it started from and uh, how many people are involved in, in coming up with that kyondo. Uh, I think that's the, the story we need, we, we need to make, not necessarily on the market itself, because no, the, market see, is, the, market, can I finish? the market is it's big. We're selling the Maasai market, not just one product. Yeah. So the thing of the Kyondo, yes, that and the Akala, which are two things which are very common in the Maasai market, can have its little spotlight when we're talking about the product. We are supposed to... Over at Wazalendo, a very diplomatic discussion is going on. Uh, capture our... Um, the issues we came out with. Should we capture first of all the strong points that the, our 
our, our culture has in terms of uh, those artifacts and handicrafts. One common issue that I realized was cutting across was the issue of uh, marketing. I saw the issue of creativity where what we throw sometimes through the dustbin mm. is, 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 is worth more than we think. I can start doing research and um, you can work in typing. The first person we met is called Mama Kamba, otherwise her name is Beatrice. She told us she has never known that she can sell what she has outside the country. So I want us to tell, to tell, to communicate to the world through her story. Yeah. Instead of talking about these things on and on, let us come with a plan. That's the plan that I have. Yeah, I'm in it, please. Okay, let's look at the introduction. Yeah. Let us look at the people. Yeah. Okay, the place, Kariako, and perhaps the village market. Let's move, let's have that plan. Yeah. Let's start the work now. This is what I'm trying to explain. I don't know, maybe it's not that I'm getting through. I'm saying the introduction, we already mm -hmm. said that's done, right? Clearly, there isn't as much diplomacy playing out in Kenya Moja. Eunice is at loggerheads with her team and seemingly won't budge. I want to come in on Maasai. You know, the market's called Maasai Market. But uh, it's not entirely a Maasai business. So I don't know how, how describing Maasai comes into this. They, they this came market. from Maasai. The people who got bidding is Maasai. But the objective of, of this proposal, what is it intending to? It's intending to market uh, the idea of Maasai market to European. But Europe. why would they take it? Yeah, but the objective is what I'm talking about. Okay. For me, I think, and when the experience I've had is, you're like, this is a bracelet, I'm selling it to you. Do you know how this bracelet was made? How? It's made by the, a woman who takes this beading and makes these things. Things. You give the story that we, that we already said, though, but you have to entice them to want to buy the product. I think, I think, I think, I think, I think, Eunice, it's not about this bracelet. It's not about the bracelet. Aiden, however, is not about to let the matter go. Lots of this, uh, if you want to... Uh, make your, yourself good, you can go to any shop and buy anything. But story behind is very, very important. Why should I, someone buy, buy this, not this one you have? Okay, if I was in Canada where I was, yeah. and somebody has told me, I'm bringing you 10,000 bracelets yeah. for you to sell. Yeah. I have to find the market. Eunice not brings her experiences from abroad to bear on the argument. Who are these people who buy um, things from out, who buy um, African things? Anyone. Not anyone. If you convince them. Not anyone. Not, them it's it's not the story. style of everyone. Yeah. It's fashion. After the heated discussion, Ken and Moja finally start to work on their proposal. The waters are not as turbulent over at Wazalendo. And Joram and Hardlin are putting the final touches to their proposal. And that she cannot afford to travel given her finances mm. and her old age. Think you can tell who will be leaving the show tonight? Send us a text message to 6264 starting with the word Maasai Market and stand a chance to win an Uangozi gift pack. Presentation Day is here and His Excellency Jacques Petlou Switzerland's ambassador to Kenya and Ambassador Peter Olenkureya, former permanent secretary, Ministry of Foreign Affairs, are ready to listen to the contestants' proposals. Kenya Moja go first, and Aidan and Solomon are in suits. I'd like to take this opportunity to welcome His Excellency, the ambassador to Swiss ambassador to Kenya, His Excellency Jacques Pitlord, and our own Peter. The objective of our proposal is to broaden Maasai market business concept nationally and in the European market. The second objective is to advocate for acceptable price in both local and European market. Maasai market is a true festival of color where Kenyan artisans showcase their ideas their crafts to popular tourists who come. Despite their arguments the previous day, Aiden enthusiastically presents their proposal. 
was Orlando walking in style and seemed very ready to sell the Maasai market concept. We are here today this morning to present to you a proposal on cultural diplomacy. My colleague is Harlin Busui. Hold on a minute. When did the task turn into cultural diplomacy? The Kenyan uh, handicraft industry has been there since before independence. But as time goes by, we keep improving and working on our art, not just for the artistic purpose, but to serve other purposes. Right now what we are seeing here is art with purpose, what I would like to call art with purpose. Each and every one of these things is artistic in nature, it is beautiful, it is well made, you want to look at it. It can present a very good picture in your house, in your office, anywhere. But again, it has purpose, it can be used, it serves just more than one purpose. Thank you very much. Back to Kenya Moja and Solomon takes the podium. Mr. Peter, the moment you walk into a Maasai market, I'm sure you'll meet people from all walks of life. But it is not these people that give you the feel. It is actually the artifacts. And these artifacts are the brain children of the artisans. Actually, Maasai market has various types of products. We are actually looking at fashion products. And under fashion products, we are looking at beadwax. And Adam will help us look at the beads. You can see that they are very beautiful. And apart from that, we also have the bracelets. They are still beadwax. They can come with different sets of designs. Units as such. You, could, you can make the bracelets with the beads in the, in the colors of your country's flag. I would like to continue with the presentation now. So first of all, let's ask the question, why hasn't the Maasai market concept penetrated the European market? Now, our project is on cultural diplomacy. And we love it. Art with a purpose. Now, two broad categories of handicrafts dominate this industry. Home decoration or houseware and fashion accessories. Joram continues with the Wazaland presentation rather loudly. Market. The locals in Kenya were taken as a whole. Now behind the international counterparts. We have uh, problems of sales outlets and trade chains. Problems of trade It seems Wazalando wrote out their presentation so well that they decided to literally read it out for the ambassadors word for word. Reuse and recycling of most of your own materials. We produce art with a purpose. Such that other than the ornamental value of the artwork, the piece has a function to perform. At the entrance of Kariako Market sits an elderly lady, most probably in her 60s. She is very joyful and welcoming. And the first impression that one has of her is that she loves her work. Her hands are full. And Hadlin too had a story to tell, or rather, to read. What I think they did well is that uh, the dressing uh, spoke volumes. So if they were to be judged on uh, just a physical appearance, uh, definitely uh, they would be had there. Kenya Moja are deep into the presentation. Organized formal um, group representing the artisans, representing their brand, representing their products, and representing their business. There's a lack of uniform, uniform pricing. You'll find this a color being sold at Career at one price. You go to, um, to the KICC market and find it at another price. And you also go to Village Market and find it at a completely different price. So when you have no uniform pricing, how are we going to take these products to Europe without having an actual pricing here in the country? Uh, there's some, some points which I'm not, I'm not personally happy with. Is uh, the, the, the fact that uh, Eunice, being, being the leader, took major parts of the of the work. She felt she could, she is the one in a po in, in position to do better than everyone. Aiden is still not happy with Eunice's style of leadership. The government to approach us with ideas, which is wrong. So, but in there, in there, in defence as well, the government there is no setup to help the Maasai market artisans. With the presentation over, it was time to field questions from the panel. There are a couple of points which, in my opinion, remain a bit unclear. 
Uh, are you speaking now to a hard-nosed businessman who really wants to go into the market with something original from Eastern Africa? Or are you appealing to the humanitarian, uh, let's say, feelings and, um, and more like, uh, you know, there is this organization in, in France called Magasin du Monde, uh, where, you know, you sell products because you know they've been produced by poor people and you are helping them. What's, what's the approach? I, we would like to emphasize more on the business side because we are, I mean, we don't want Africa's um, merchandise to always be sold with a sad sub story of, oh, please buy this. Buy it because it's actually a nice product. Buy it because it's a bag that you're going to actually, you know, uh, wear around. So the social message, you know, you know, that's maybe the feel good thing at the end that you can put, like, thank you for buying this because it's really helped people. But we would focus more on selling it as an actual product that was made in Africa, made in Kenya, but buy it because you like this thing. How do you then intend to help Mama Kamba, right, with all her products? She's there, of course, with an impressive uh, uh, salt shaker uh, from the horn, quite impressive, I agree with you. But then how do you intend to help Mama Mboga and the others, you know, in terms of marketing uh, their products? Um, one of the points we've highlighted is about uh, Handicraft Trade Association. And uh, we encourage that they form an association where they can get them to help each other, support each other in the process of uh, performing their, their trade. Some products are specifically, let's say, for courier shops. And some products can be suddenly a big hit on the foreign market. But then which one is it? Is it, is it the, uh, the shield? Is it uh, the cow horn? Is it, what is it? Uh, let me show you one that probably you did not see. This is a, a sandal. Mm -hmm. uh, well, for the first time I've come to realize that human foot is the map of Africa. Look at this. This is human mm -hmm. foot. Mm -hmm. And it is African map. Mm -hmm. So as you put it on, you are also seeing your, your I mean, uh, the Africanism in this. Yeah? So this is what makes it unique. Thank you. I think it went really well because, um, first of all, they were very receptive. We were, we were kind of afraid that they're going to be, you know, just some G of older men who think they know everything, they, they know the answers. So they were very receptive to our ideas, asked for clarification where it was needed. All of us um, gave our points as we had agreed before, so nobody went off, off script. And I think it really went well. They had the Swiss ambassador in the room, but never once did they talk to the Swiss ambassador and name Switzerland as one of the places that they were pitching to. So, what did the ambassadors think of the presentations? In my opinion now, in one of the cases, there was a serious market study and the other one was more like, we should really try to put these products into the market, help us. Uh, I tend to prefer the ones with a business-minded approach because I think Kenya is different from many uh, uh, other African countries. Uh, it was clear from their presentation that they had attempted, you know, to understand the market itself. And, and I would be inclined also to, to say that uh, that particular presentation more or less captured, you are calling them 90, 90 seconds. The 90 seconds may not have really captured the whole imagination, but I think they, they attempted actually to convince on, on my part. Kenya Moja reacted to what we were saying and they even contradicted, which I think is a, is a good thing because if you want to be a, a leader, you, you have to be able to contradict. Uh, the other side was more sticking to the concept of beautiful and useful. And we have this concept and we are sticking to it because we have not, not thought much further. This other team, yes, uh, they have tried. And, uh, and, and to them, I, I, I think okay, they, are, they are a little bit inward looking, if I may say so. In as much as they are talking about uh, cultural diplomacy, yes, but to what extent can you sell that? Candid views about each of the contestants then followed. But Joram can 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 be a good politician, you know. <laughs> he doesn't need a, a, a big uh, 
the microphone. microphone. No, <laughs> the sheer force of his voice, beautiful voice, deep voice, you know, and, and good. Uh, but a bit sticking to his guns instead of uh, discussing uh, the, 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 the questions uh, asked. This uh, hardly yeah. uh, with her story, you know, very convincing, you know, <laughs> of Mama, Mama Kamba. Uh, uh, I think listening to her and, and her appeal, you know, she's, she's very good in persuasion. She was also preaching a bit. She was also preaching, preaching the gospel, uh, which might go down quite well if you're speaking to NGOs, but if you speak about business, you cannot be uh, actually preaching. I think Eunice is very articulate, maybe sometimes a bit of an overkill, because she tries to cram so many information in, in a single sentence, that in the end, you know, you, 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 you're trying or you struggle to, uh, to follow what, what, what she's trying to do. Uh, one should keep to one single argument in one single sentence. Solomon, uh, he, he is a very passionate personality and he should be coached in terms of the technical aspects of uh, what he's uh, trying to do. I think uh, Adam Mohammed was uh, maybe a bit suffering from the fact that his English is uh, less uh, impressive uh, than the one of the, the other candidates. Uh, but at the same time, he was very articulate in his thinking. He was very reactive. I was quite impressed uh, by very calm, really trying to do uh, the, the, the right thing. Coming up on Uongozi. I did not see the spaces uh, in the document. Please, but when John came, please. I asked him stop. You couldn't even find out how to pronounce the Swiss ambassador's name. You come into a room and you murder the man's name. The person going home today. Think you can tell who will be leaving the show tonight? Send us a text message to 6264 starting with the word Maasai Market and stand a chance to win an Uangozi gift pack. It was time to go to the Situation Room where someone was going to be leaving the competition. Welcome back contestants. We do have a guest judge and that is Mr. Moses Mutier. Karibu Bwana Mutier. Good morning contestants. Both ambassadors felt that the proposals were vague on the issue of how. They felt that you had some ideas of how you would like to, to go about the task but didn't actually get into how you would do so. That being said, the most convincing proposal in the opinion of the ambassadors to whom you presented yesterday was that of the Kenya Moja team. Congratulations Kenya Moja. I'd like to invite both team leaders to give us their feedback on how they think they fared in the task. As a team I think we did very well. Um, we were uh, we were in the common room discussion stage. Yes there were a couple of arguments but we were able to, to reach uh, middle ground, uh, get the ideas down on paper, get them down as um, quickly as possible. And um, everyone put their two cents and I tried to make sure that everybody understood what they was being asked for us. Was uh, we engaged all the uh, um, possible techniques to develop the proposal that we did uh, uh, present. And uh, despite being two, we were able to coordinate very well and uh, communicate to each other. We had uh, responsibilities, one doing research at one point, the other one uh, typing, and uh, we worked on it. At presentation, we organized ourselves very well and we did present uh, as we could. I'll now invite uh, team members to give some feedback on, uh, on their team leaders. Eunice as a leader, she was great because she first gave us this confidence in the task that she already had some experience and when we gave her the opportunity to be the team leader she came up with these great new ideas like the e-marketing and to me she was a great leader and in terms of percentage i would give her 95 percent one thing i would like to note out is Eunice 
want to do it herself most of the most of the work aiden was uh, not so flattering goals, but she, she's confident of herself doing bulk of the work which uh, it's not I mean, what wasn't fair to me personally so overall i can give her 80 percent hardly my my team leader was uh, hands on and uh, when he needed uh, when like I needed some explanations here and there he would give why didn't you propose yourself as team leader knowing that Joram was a team leader in the in the previous task Hardlin finds herself in the hot seat uh, how many tasks have you been team leader one and this was uh, uh, Joram how many tasks have you been team leader uh, two, this is the third wow and you still haven't answered the question of why did you let the opportunity pass by why weren't you team leader? You say the floor was open. Why didn't you say you wanted to be team leader? Your chances were good, yeah. 50% yeah. chance. Mm -hmm. There's just the two of you. Okay, well, uh, when he said that he, should, uh, he was comfortable leading, I let him lead. And then in the, at the end of it, you ended up taking on a role that uh, in many instances uh, made it appear that you were his PA. I think they used to call them secretaries in the most sexist years. A junior role. Did I play that role? Penya Moja, um, you knew in advance who you would be meeting. You'd already been told the names and the designations of the people that you'd be meeting. How much research did you do on them? I understand that that was something that we should have done, but for time constraint, we did. We really honestly did not have the time to, to, to investigate the two um, ambassadors. How long does it take to Google somebody's name? You mentioned all sorts of other countries as to where it is this, uh, I, this proposal and your proposed market was. You never once mentioned a town in Switzerland. You never once mentioned Switzerland. You didn't do any research about um, what trade already exists between Kenya and, and the Swiss. It, it, was, uh, it was amazing to me. Okay, on the, we never did some research, but at least we knew. My idea was not based on research, but it was based on the knowledge that, okay, most of the tourists that come to Kenya are usually perhaps from the European market. Solomon, I'm just questioning the idea that you as a group and you as a community of leaders are happy to just make assumptions. I'm curious as to why you couldn't even find out how to pronounce the Swiss ambassador's name. You come into a room and you murder the man's name. In spite of winning the task, Kenya Moja must answer some tough questions. You needed to go and make a presentation on behalf of Kenya and you had nerves. You wouldn't make the presentation that we had sent you as a country to do. If I don't think that I've had enough time to rehearse, okay, his name is Peter Lo, Peter Lo, Peter Lo, Peter If I haven't had that time to rehearse it, then I'm not going to spoil, maybe annoy this man and then, you know, spoil our whole content because of one mistake that I made earlier. I don't think it's annoying not to call him by his name at all. Mr. Moutier was not happy and he let the contestants know it. Do you think you really represented these people? Do you think you really did justice with this chance to them you were given? Or you just massacred uh, the chance you had as leaders? The proposal we, we wrote is based on the experience we got from both markets. We talked about the condition of career core market. We explained that in our presentation. Yes, so thank you. Thank yeah. you, Hadden. Yeah. Uh, before maybe I come to this group, I want to bring it to your attention that uh, even with that story, the proposal still remains vague. I didn't tell you that the basket you had, you brought on the table and you tried to explain to the ambassadors was made of minya, did I? So that's a very big goof. Maybe. Uh, I could come maybe to was a lender group. From the way we worked on our proposal, we tried to develop um, a versatile proposal. What's a versatile proposal? <laughs> that proposal as it is, we did analysis before you continue. Did you expect the Swiss ambassador to go and make corrections on your proposal if he was going to present it to, uh, to his countrymen? 
Uh, let me Do you know that you started by making even a spelling mistakes on your head on your headings? Did you notice that? Okay. Instead of a proposal, you just presented minutes of a brainstorming meeting. First of all, I take responsibility for the um, errors that were in the proposal. Why do you take responsibility and Hadlin is the one who was writing? Yeah, because as the group leader, we ought to have uh, like set time for proofreading the proposal. So you didn't. We did not uh, take time to like go through the whole proposal and just uh, finalize it. I think the time cut us short. Adeline, explain to me why there are five blank pages in your proposal. Yeah, when I was going through the document, I was doing it alone. So I did not see the spaces uh, in the document. Hadley, but when John came, I asked John, stop. Does somebody have to come and see your mistake? How no, not really, not really, really but oh, since you, we are two, we should no, all have a look no, at the document. No, no, no. Okay, please. please take responsibility. You've already looked and seen that you have five blank pages. What's so difficult about pressing just to delete that? I did not see them. I certainly feel like I've heard enough. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'd like to take this opportunity to, to ask you to leave the situation room so that the judges may deliberate. We have uh, a number of candidates, really, who are, uh, you know, who are on the chopping block, as it were. They're begging to go home. Begging to go home. Yeah. Aiden's contribution and performance within this task. I, I felt his presentation, uh, his uh, contribution to the presentation, shall we say, uh, let him down. I, I was totally shocked by Hadley mm. because I. I was, I was disappointed that first and foremost she did not want to take up a leadership position in this particular task. Given that Joram has been team leader in quite a number of tasks already, mm. and especially the immediate, uh, the previous task. It just seems a shame that, you know, our women, you know, are not taking seriously these leadership positions. She, she, she gave up before she even started, yeah. mm. especially for this task. She just gave up. Uh, I also blame uh, uh, his colleague, the leader. Mm. Joram, 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 Joram for the fact that uh, he is a leader, yeah. right, and he could not have accepted uh, uh, to rely on information which is outdated. He lacked the requisite seriousness when he suggests that here is a shield uh, that an ambassador can take and use to protect himself from stones. Mm -hmm. Eunice is very good at stepping up and saying that she wants to be the leader, mm -hmm. but then she cows everybody else yes, into yes, submission. Very, very, so when it comes to that level, when you are when trying to choose a leader, you ask yourself, this person, okay, is good, he's got ideas, but with time, can she become a dictator? Okay, Which I, I think, think we have made a decision. It's back to the situation room and an elimination is imminent. We move on to the elimination. Well, maybe I'll just talk a little bit about uh, individual performance mm -hmm. and I'll start with Hadley. Hadley so far in the different tasks, you've come out as a person who's very persuasive in talking to people, of a warm personality, a good speaker. However, this project is about leadership. And that's the one thing you seem to be avoiding at all costs. Arden, watching you and watching the others, I, I see a young man who is very, very passionate. And you take on your cause, you know, you, I would love to have you in my corner if I was ever in trouble. Because you're very passionate and you, you go the full distance. Eunice, you did well, you tried to, to, to present. I could also see that uh, as a leader, if there was a problem with your colleagues during the presentations, you, 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 you could come in quickly and uh, cover, cover them. I don't know whether that uh, would make uh, uh, my fellow gentlemen here feel intimidated or something or helped. I don't know. <laughs> I would say uh, keep it up. Yeah. Thank you. Joram, you're a very flamboyant character. Hmm? And you have a very strong voice. So your presence is felt. It's, it's commendable how you're able to offer yourself to take the risk to to guide, to help guide and facilitate the group to achieve a task. It's a very commendable thing. Don't be comfortable with where you are. Work towards being better than what you are. Seek to excel. Ladies and gentlemen, the person 
going home today following the conclusion of your task is Hardlin Nusui. You may leave the Situation Room. I want to win this thing. I don't know how I'm going to tell to tell it to this person. I don't know if I'll have to preach about it, but I would love it if Eunice won this. Right now, one of our judges has told us that men don't embrace women leadership, that they view it like you know some kind of a ironish or something like that. So I want Eunice to take this to prove that point wrong. The Kenya Motor team head back to their common room, this time not for deliberations, but for their reward. <laughs> Next time on Uongozi. Telling me that I'm not going to win for me, I feel that is uh, sensational. <laughs> yeah, and uh, unless you tell me the truth, because I don't think you're telling me the truth. Uh, what truth are we talking about here? Why are you playing safe with me? To continue this conversation, go to www.wongozi.co.ke or you can like our Facebook page Wongozi Kenya or follow us on Twitter at Wongozi254. Think you can tell who will be leaving the show tonight? Send us a text message to 6264 starting with the word Masai Market and stand a chance to win an Uongozi gift pack.